Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Helen Shenton. I'm the University um, Librarian and College Archivist at Trinity College Dublin. Um, just coming up to my first year anniversary on Tuesday. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted with um, Sandra Collins becoming the new National Librarian of Ireland because it means I'm not the newbie anymore of, of Connell. <laughs> um, this has been, I have to say, an extremely impressive conference. Um, I didn't know that Connell hadn't had conferences before. It's been very interesting listening to people's um, uh, reactions and it's really struck me the number of people for whom it's their first conference um, and also uh, the number of people for whom it's the first time that they've spoken um, and I'm very very impressed with the quality um, and how well everyone's doing. <laughs> Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> You look, you look <laughs> swan-like. <laughs> so we've got um, three presentations, and the, um, the first presentation we're going to have, are you going to do it together? Uh, okay. So um, let me introduce you to, um, we have Audrey. Audrey's going first. Orla first. Okay, 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 thank you Orla. So it's um, Orla Roach, and then we're going to have Audrey Dunn, please. Uh, so good afternoon everybody, hope you're all nice and wide awake now after your lunch. Um, th this presentation was put together actually by the Troika in the Digital Library, uh, but Danny, our third member of our little Troika, couldn't be with us today. So I'll take you through the first bit and then I'll pass the baton on over to Audrey. Um, so the point of our presentation today was to take you through some of the work that goes on behind the nice pretty pictures that go up on a digital library. So our presentation has very few pretty pictures, I'm afraid. But to compensate, we've also left out all of the scary technical infrastructure diagrams. So the obligatory background and some stats there on the UCD Digital Library. Uh, the UCD Digital Library in the last few years has transitioned from a project, a PRTLI funded project, the IVRLA, into a mainstream service based in our research services unit, which as Michael pointed out earlier on, we can no longer call a newly founded unit. Um, the, uh, in the last couple of years, we've been working very hard on our policies and our procedures, and in particular in documenting those policies and procedures. And part of that has been developing a streamlined collection management workflow. So our wor collection workflow takes uh, our digital collections from the initial discussions all the way through to their going live online and even slightly beyond that. Uh, the workflow we've come up with has eight main processes and each of those are divided into a series of stages. There are a number of tasks, subtasks and actions needed to complete those stages and there are thousands and thousands of step by steps which are detailed in our manuals that we've developed for each of the main processes. So there's an overview of the eight main processes and their stages. Apologies to those of you at the back to whom this is probably teensy tiny little writing. Um, the slides will be available later. Um, one of the things we were kind of keen to point out is that for those of you not familiar maybe with digital library workflows is there's an awful lot more to managing and acquiring a digital collection than the actual scanning and digitalization process that most people think of immediately when they hear digital library projects. Uh, another thing that we wanted to, to note in our little diagrams of our, our processes was that there are steps in the processes that are not, um, it's not a linear process. There are point, different processes that can happen simultaneously. And also there are points in the process that we, we can leave out for different collections. Each of our collections are slightly different. So one of the key um, tools that we use is one we developed in-house on a FileMaker Pro database, which is our ingest metadata and administration database, which we call IMAD for a short, catchy <laughs> name that means nothing to anyone else. Um, so we developed this in-house. It's based mainly on our in-house profile of mods that we use, and we use it to create and edit metadata and to track and manage our collections and basically prepare them for ingest into Fedora, which is our digital repository software. So the first stage of our workflow is the profiling stage, and that's where we have the initial discussions with a depositor and the initial scoping out of a collection. Um, once a collection, you know, once we've had initial discussions and a collection is considered coming into the digital library, we appraise that collection to decide whether or not it meets the criteria in our collection development policy. 
if it passes that little test, we move on to accepting the collection in and we set it up on our various workflows. So for each of our processes, we've just got a few details of just some of the documents and tools that we use for, for each of those processes. The key document here will be our collection profiling document. That's where we detail the characteristics of a collection and all the information that we need to manage that collection. It's something we refer to again and again at each stage in the workflow. Um, and also our collection development policy, which is very important for detailing our criteria. Our policies, our procedures, our manuals all live on Confluence, which is our in-house wiki that we use, uh, where we keep all of our collaborative information. So the next process is our digital asset curation, which is, I suppose, the bit people think of immediately when they think of digital libraries. There's two main ways that we get collections in. We can either acquire a collection that is already digital, or we can create our digital objects through scanning or digitization. The workflow for both of those is pretty similar, and it can include things like file processing. For example, image files may need to be cropped and rotated, and that's an area where we sometimes get help from other library departments. Um, we also have separate work processes for processes that only happen occasionally on particular collections, like where redacting might be needed, or georeferencing, which is where we need to uh, assign geographical coordinates to an object. So for this process, it's actually quite technical, and there's a wide variety of tools needed depending on the, the collections. There's a long list there of just some of them. Um, if you want further details of how we use those particular tools, get in contact with us. In terms of documents, uh, we keep production diaries on every single one of our collections, and that's where we each of us log the day-to-day -day work that we do on a collection. Uh, we detail anything that might be a bit unusual or a difficulty that came up in that collection. And the image and ID tracker is a spreadsheet, basically, that we use to track all the work done to the individual digital files. Uh, so that might include the actual scanning process, who did the scanning, the date they did the scanning, and any image processing was, that was done to the files subsequently. So the bit, my favourite bit, cataloguing. Um, I have to say, I'm quite glad we call it cataloguing and not metadata-ing. Uh, <laughs> the the, the cataloguing is quite similar to anyone who has, has dealt with um, or, you know, traditional cataloguing. Uh, generally what happens is we get a variety of metadata in with the collection. It can be in the form of a finding aid, a spreadsheet, or in fact sometimes even mark records. Um, and that, that metadata can be quite varied in its, in its level of description. So one of the first things we have to do is analyse it and see whether it needs cleaning and normalising. For example, dates might need to be changed from text dates to ISO dates. Um, and then we move on to the full cataloging, which is where we conduct the kind of record by record cataloging. And in IMAD, we keep records on our collections, the individual objects in those collections, and also the parts or files that make up those objects. So the documents here, the main one is our mesh data policy, where we have detailed our own in-house application of our mesh data schema, like MODS and EAD. MODS is the main one that we use. We also use a wide variety of other mesh data schemas and control vocabularies and authorities and the details of all of those are listed on the about section of the digital library. The data dictionary is basically my map, it's how I don't get lost. Um, we, in that details each of the individual elements, their attributes, their field name in IMAD, their field name in the MySQL database that's behind everything and also their public field name on the actual <coughs> public display on the digital library. So at this point I shall pass the baton to Audrey. <laughs> Thanks, Orna. Um, okay, so the next process that we actually have to deal with and actually can happen right from the very start is copyright. And it's a very important aspect of the workflow um, because we actually have to assess every single digital object, seek copyright clearance if needed, and then absolutely everything in the digital library gets a license for reuse. Um, we work closely with the depositors when it comes to this process. We also have to consider ethics as well, because we actually have quantitative and qualitative data in the digital library, so those actually become the restricted access collections. Um, for those collections, we have a procedure in place where people can actually apply for access and they have to sign an end user license. Okay, so that process is quite time intensive and we actually rely very heavily obviously on the copyright acts and we actually keep track of absolutely everything because obviously you have to show due diligence so we have a copyright register 
And as I said, we have license attached to every single digital object. We use Creative Commons and we use the non-commercial share alike license for most of our material. Um, but the depositors actually can choose which license they would actually prefer. And we have to be very aware of third party copyright and orphan works as well. So we use the most restrictive licenses for reuse licenses for those. Um, all of our rights metadata is actually viewable online. So if you go into the collection level or object level, you'll actually see what rights we've assigned to everything. So the next process is the scary technical one. It's the ingest process. Um, so that's when the collection has been digitized, it has been catalogued, the rights have been cleared, and then we go into actually doing all the techie stuff to it. So you're going in to validate the files, validate the metadata to make sure it's valid XML, create derivative data streams, bundle everything together, and finally upload the entire collection into a repository. And from there it gets indexed and it can actually be harvested by external content aggregators. Um, we use many, many tools, so please do talk to us if you're looking for any tools to help with processes similar to this. Um, it's very, very technical, so because some of our collections are huge, we actually have automated a lot of the processes, and you can see some of the tools are listed here. Uh, preservation takes place at all stages, but it's the, a lot of the technical preservation takes place at this stage, um, and it's actually a separate process. Uh, quality review is the next one. Um, so this is where, um, once the collection has gone into the digital library, we have to make sure that everything looks okay because we have a um, responsive website. So we need to make sure that everything looks good on desktops, on mobiles, on um, tablets. And we have to check everything. We check our metadata, we check the digital library functionality so that people can download things. We check the image files that they're displaying properly. So everything gets checked. Um, and we have to check it on campus and off campus as well, just to make sure that you know, everything is working properly. And we actually have a series of advanced user testing. So we have a predefined checklist that we go through for every single collection. And we check it on a variety of different devices and under various conditions. So once the collection has gone live and we're happy enough with how it looks, um, we progress to the remainder of the publicity and publica um, promotion aspect of it. And this is actually the quite exciting bit that we really, really enjoy. Um, we work in conjunction with the depositors and we work with our colleagues in UCD Library Outreach and the UCD Communications Office as well. And we use the usual variety of um, publicity channels like social media, um, internal communication avenues and the external media channels as well. Not every collection gets a physical launch. Um, but we do actively promote every new collection before and after it goes live, and we would always tweet around the relevant, significant historic events and anniversaries. So after a month that a, that a collection has been up online, we actually do an evaluation of how the whole process went. And this is where we actually review the entire workflow. So everything Orna has described today, we actually go back and go at each <coughs> process, what worked, what didn't work, and whether or not we need to actually update our policies and procedures and it's also a good opportunity to see the usage statistics for all of the collections. So we load the tools and documents to help with that as well. And that's effectively our digital library collections workflow, which is part of a much bigger workflow um, that includes you know, preservation and user services, that kind of thing. And the thing with our workflow is it's, we have, it's so technical and we need a huge diverse range of skills, that um, skills becomes a very big thing. Um, it's kind of a buzzword in our office because everything that we do is new to us because there's a lot of things you don't learn in library school. So, and there's a lot of things that, like there's acronyms for absolutely everything in the digital library world. It's like acronym bingo in our office some days. Um, so we've had to learn a lot of new skills, but you know, a lot of it is learned on the job and we have a very kind of great environment that allows us to you know, learn these skills and to talk to each other and to work together and we all have different skills so we kind of teach each other as well. Um, and that's it. So um, thank you for your attention and feel free to contact us about the UCD Digital Library.